Welcome to SFA, Sunday morning Sunday school at 9 a.m., coffee connection at 10 a.m., and worship experience at 10.30 a.m. Kids Truth Conference coming up on October 13th. Let Pastor Amy know if you're interested in going. Trunk or Treat is coming up on October 27th. Candy donations are needed. Please bring your donations to the foyer. It's time again for our semi-annual Lego Night, November 10th. Come join us for a night of fun. Our Wednesday 1 o'clock service for senior adults begins this Wednesday. Don't miss out on this great time of worship and fellowship. Revival services start this weekend, Saturday at 6 p.m., Sunday morning at 10.30, and Sunday night at 6 p.m. We hope you'll come and enjoy this time of refreshing and revival. Come expecting. And now, let's go to the service. Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. Book Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In nature, you would not find one tree that had three different kinds of apples. The Bible teaches us in Genesis 1:11. That every seed will bring forth a fruit of its own kind, right? You don't plant a, a, a peach seed and get an apple tree, right? Basic science, we all understand that. Now let's think about people. Have you ever had someone say to you, boy, you look just like your sister or your brother or your mom or dad? Anybody ever had that said to you? We, most of us have. Who thinks they look like someone else in their family? Sure. <laughs> or maybe you've seen a, a picture of your mom or dad when they were your age, and they look back then just like you look right now. There's a picture of my mom in the mid-40s on a little tricycle in a dress with her hair all curly and, and just everywhere. And we got a picture of Ariana on a tricycle in a little white dress. Of course, my mom's was in black and white. 
carried on in the collar. And they looked like they looked like the same kid. Looked like somebody had gone back to the future and come back. And so we we see this. My my father-in-law make this joke with him. There's a picture of his mom in the house, and, and I don't mean it mean, so he takes it, he knows I'm joking. But I say, Bob, if you put a, a, a gold or a, a gray, silver gray wig on, that's your mom. I mean, it look it looks like Bob with a wig on. And every time I see that picture, that's what I first think is, wait, why is he wearing a wig? And, but it's his mom. But just like with apples, people from the same family tree will have the same looks, the same skin color, eyes, hair, height, shape of nose, body shape, and many other things. This happens because these physical characteristics are passed on from one generation to another. You may have red hair and your parents don't, but maybe your grandmother or your grandfather had red hair. Isn't that amazing how God designed it that you could sit here and be the only blonde-haired, blue-eyed uh, kid in your family and you go, how'd that happen? But then you find down the line just a little bit, you had family members that blonde-haired and blue eyes. But there's another wonderful thing called adoption, where parents have a, a special desire to bring a child into their family. Maybe they're not able to bear children, or, or maybe they just have a love for adoption. Like my, my, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law were unable to have children, and so they adopted three children. See, God has a plan when he makes family members look like each other. It's just one of the ways that he helps us to recognize. But here's my question. If we recognize the physical family, the mom, the dad, the son, the daughter, and we say, yeah, I can tell that's a DeWitt, or I can tell that's a Harmon. Is the same thing true with the family of God? Can we look alike? No one wants to talk right now. Yeah. Can we look alike? No, I think that we can show the same love, but we can also show the same love so we would be alike. So you're saying we can look alike? Yeah, but we can look alike? Yeah. Okay. Right. How, how many would say, no, we cannot look alike as a family of God? There's nine of us, and we all look like one. Well, I want to take to you just a few, and this isn't this isn't everything. But I want to take and show you some leaves that should be on your family tree. Let me try and see if I can make it. Can, can this side over here see it? Can this side over here see it? Okay. If you can't, you might have to move to your ends because I want everybody to, to see these. And just like In a family, we may look alike, but there's differences, right? You would believe no snowflake, there's no same snowflake, they're all different. Well, these leaves are going to represent us being all different, but yet we come from the same tree. And so this first one that I'm going to attach is how the world recognizes us is that we read the Bible. That's how the world can see us as the same, from the same family. We're actually reading the Word and studying the Word. We talked about this this morning. We have to be careful that we don't just open the Bible and read a passage and say, oh, this is what this means. Because we need to know what happened before and what happened after. We need to know who the writer was, who he was writing to. We need to know the culture, the time. Now, do you know that in, and I said this in Sunday school class, in the 1960s, if you would have said, hey, look at that, that's dope, what would they have been looking for in 1960? 
marijuana. That's what marijuana was called. They would be looking and going, Where, where's the marijuana? Now, if a kid says, hey, look at that, that's dope, what is he looking at? No. He's looking at something that's cool. They say, oh, that's dope, that's neat, that's awesome. See the differences from the 60s to now? That you can't just, you have to understand the culture, you have to understand what is being said. And so we have to understand that. But one of the signs that the world is going to be able to recognize that we're from the same family is that we are reading the Word of God. One of the next leaves on the tree is giving. The world teaches you that nothing is for free. And to always be on guard if somebody says, hey, I just want to give you this. Because there's probably strings attached. You probably owe them a favor. You don't get anything for free in this world. But in Christianity, the Lord teaches us to be giving. To take the shirt off my own back to give it to another. To, to feed the hungry. To clothe the naked. <coughs> To house the homeless, to visit the prisoner, to visit the widower, with no strings attached. I'm not giving my shirt because I'm hoping to get another one. The world should be able to look at the church and recognize it because it's giving, not because it's taking. So one of our characteristics should be giving. This one is not only hard for our children, but it's hard for some church members, too. One of the characteristics should be what? Anybody read that from there? Sharing. One of the first words that a child learns is what? Mine. Mine. It's not here you go. Or I want to share, it's mine. And as parents, we have to raise and teach the child that not everything is theirs. Or that even if it is theirs, it's okay to share it with somebody else and let them enjoy it. And in the church, it should be the same way. Sharing should be something that represents who we are in the church. The world should be able to look at the church and say that that's a sharing group of people. You know, right now we've opened our doors, and this has been a prayer of mine. We opened our doors to a homeschooling network in our area that once a month they're going to meet at our church to do a homeschooling event. I want to open our doors, our doors to the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts. I want to make it available that if, if somebody comes and says, Pastor, can we use your field to practice soccer during the afternoon? I want the world to see that this isn't an institute that says get off our property. And one of the things that was told to me when I came here was that they said, Pastor, if you notice, there will not be any churches in this town that have basketball doors. Well, I'm a big basketball fan. I played basketball in junior high and high school. I was wanting to go to college to play. And I went... Why would there not be basketball holes? Kids love to play basketball. Because in Streeter, many of the adults look at children as troublemakers. And they're afraid to put basketball goals because they're afraid that they will come and vandalize their property so they don't put basketball goals. So they're telling the children, you are not welcome here. My response to that was, well, hopefully we'll be able to go buy a couple basketball goals and put them in our parking lot. Because I would rather 20, 30 kids playing in our parking lot breaking our rim with them knowing that they're welcome at this church. We should be a church that is sharing. And remember that old saying, sharing is caring. Caring, good. That just so happened they were in this order. I didn't do it on purpose, but I thought that was funny. Sharing is caring. 
We should be a church that cares, that when something goes on in our society, that it actually bothers us. That when the, when the town or city reaches out to us, that we're available. That when the school system reaches out to us, I know a couple of years ago that my brother-in-law, uh, when he was a youth pastor, had gone to the school to eat lunches with some of the kids from his youth ministry, and there had been a young girl that was very popular in the school, very well alive, <coughs> killed in a car accident. And the majority of the school was grieving over this and didn't know how to, to do it. And because Nick was there at the school, they came to him and said, is there any way that you could talk to some of these kids that need somebody to talk to? And he said, of course. And so he did that for a few hours and they came to him and said, Pastor Nick, is there any way that you could come all day tomorrow and be available in, a, in one of our offices if kids are struggling with the loss of this girl? And he said, absolutely, I'll, I'll check my calendar, but I should be able to clear it and be here. Well, that's what we should be to our community. Our community should see that it's not just about us, it's not just about our name, but that we're willing to come beside and help in time, of, in time of need. So we need to be caring. Caring would be something that represents us to the world. Now you may say this is a no-brainer, but there's times that I question this, is that people should be able to recognize us by our love for Jesus. I can tell you there's been some churches that I've been in that I question whether or not the love of Jesus was there by the way the people treated one another. See, we can't say we love Jesus but hate those around us. We can't say we love Jesus but tear down one another behind each other's back. We can't say we love Jesus but we aren't willing to help others in time of need. We can't say we love Jesus and find out that somebody is struggling and say, well, my struggle is worse than theirs. They just need to get over it. That's not loving Jesus. And too many of us in the church have gotten into the myth that I can be angry with, I can be upset with, I don't have to forgive so-and-so, but I still love Jesus with all my heart for going to heaven. And the entire time Jesus is saying, how can you say you love me but hate them when I love them? There's a conflict. The church should be able to recognize us by our family tree, the love of Jesus. Sorry I'm walking so slow. I had to mow my dad's grass yesterday and my back is hurting. It's funny. Yesterday when we were leaving, my, my youngest daughter, Ariana, said, Dad, it's so weird. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, you always call me Bub. She said, come here, Bub. I said, yeah. She said, Paco, yesterday, because you got to know my dad. My dad's this strong, well type. And I had said to him, Friday, hey, Dad, I'll mow your grass for you. And he said, son, you've got, you got too many things going, and I don't want your back. And you've got to drive home. I don't want your back hurting. So I went to bed that night, and I went to Amy, and I said, are you okay if I mow his grass tomorrow? She said, yeah. So I got up, and I said, Dad, I need the keys to your shed so I can mow your grass. He started in, and I said, I just need your keys. And so I mowed his grass, and I came in, and he said, thanks, bub. And so Ariana goes, he said the same thing to you. <laughs> and I said, that's family. We, we resemble one another. We recognize one another by those characteristics. One of the things that should be on our family tree is helping others. Jake was over at my house a couple weeks ago and was looking at my guitars and he said, Pastor, sometime could I, could I play one of your guitars in church? 
And of course, I knew which one he was eyeing the most because it's the one he always says, if you ever sell it. <laughs> and so I said, why don't you take it tonight, take it home, play with it, and then play with it at church out of the more. We should be able and be willing to help others. There's been times that Roger has called on me to help with things with the, with the, uh, the jail in Pontiac. And, and I tried my best. I haven't always been able to. But I think he can tell you more times than not that I've dropped everything that I've had going to go with him so he wouldn't have to go alone. There's been times that Len has called on me and said, Pastor, I can't do this. I, I'm not physically able. And, you know, a woman that always had a man that was there to do everything she ever needed, and now she's widowed. Does the church remember that? Does the church remember that as someone used to have somebody do it, but they can't, they don't now, and they can't? Do we think about her grass getting cut? Do we think about windows being changed? Do we think about light bulbs being changed? The world should be able to look at us and recognize us as a family because whenever one is in need, we help as much as possible. What about this one? The world should be able to recognize us as family because we quickly forgive. I find it amazing, and I put myself in this group as well, that boy, do I want to be forgiven quick. Man, if, if I hurt Roger's feelings, um, I want him to, to forgive me as soon as I say I'm sorry. Roger, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, Pastor, I forgive you. Great. Let's go on and live our life. But Roger wounds me, and it's, well, I don't know. Let me think about it. There's a few people I need to call. There's some things I need to put on Facebook. I need to write the local newspaper. I need to put some things in my journal. And then I'll pray about it. Isn't that how we are? We want grace and mercy quick for us, but oh man. Somebody else, well, they're getting what they deserve. That, that's, they, they should have to pay the price for that. Do you always have to pay the price for what you do? Are you always willing to pay the price because you committed the offense? Are you hoping and praying that and that they're forgiving people? See, the world should be able to look at the church and say, I recognize them as family because they took that person in when no one else would forgive them. When the whole world looked at them and said they're this, that church said, it's okay, come in. We'll forgive you for the wrong that you've done. We'll forgive you of the offense that you committed. They should recognize us by the fact that they can call on us to pray. The world at any time should be able to ask us of that and know that we will, that they can count on us. When I met with the school leaders at the beginning of the year, when I met with the principal and the superintendent, they said, Pastor, would you pray? The reason we were meeting was in case they had bomb threats or an issue that they would have to leave their school, they could come here to the church. And they said, would you be willing to pray for our school this year that we wouldn't have any bomb threats? I said, let's do it now. I don't think they were planning on that. But I said, hey, let's we got a few minutes, we're, and they were here. They were in my domain. I didn't know on theirs. I said, okay, let's pray real quick. Because I wanted them to know. I wanted that principal and that superintendent to know that we are a church that prays. And we have to change this mindset of, and we've all been guilty of this, when somebody calls us and says, hey, can you pray for this? And we say, yes, I'll pray for you. Many of us, if not all of us, need to stop what we're doing right then and there and pray. Because how many of you have made that statement, hung the phone up, and never prayed a single prayer? I'm guilty of that. So we need to be a praying church. The world should be able to recognize us by our praying. Just a few more. A 
the grateful spirit. We should be different than the world. The world is always complaining, always wanting, always needing. But the church, we should be grateful. You know, if you've ever been on a missions trip, many of the people that come back say, Pastor, we're so lucky that we have this building. We should be so thankful that we have air conditioning, especially today. It's 90 degrees outside. And I can tell you, because I've witnessed it, that this room can get hotter than it is outside and can get colder than it is outside. So we need to be thankful that we have air conditioning. But there should be a spirit, a grateful spirit in this church for the things that God has done for us. We should be loving. The world should be able to recognize us by our love, which someone said earlier. We should be humble and not arrogant. When God begins to move in our church and he blesses us, instead of telling everybody about all the stuff that we've got, we should be blessing all the people around us. And then the last one. We should be praising God. We should be praising God. Families like the branches on the tree, we all grow in different directions. Yet our roots remain the same. There aren't different roots for each branch. There aren't different roots going to different places. All the roots go to that one tree and cause different branches to come on. I love Wednesday night and I'll close with this. I love Wednesday night when we came together and we prayed for Pamela because she was in a lot of pain in her back and her leg. And I understand that pain that shoots down through your back and goes through your leg. It's very uncomfortable and it's hard to sit, it's hard to stand. And we came together to pray, but before we prayed, after I asked her to come forward, I felt the Lord say, have Lisa pray for her. Because Lisa is beginning, I think, a new journey in her life and it's exciting. And I think God's going to use her more in ministry. And so I said, Pastor Lisa, would you pray over Pamela? And she prayed over her. And God spoke to me. See the different talents and the different gifts in our church. It's still one church. But how big can our tree, can our church get? How many branches can we have if we can remember that the tree is him? That we're just an extension of him. So the talents and the gifts you have are not wasted. There's a reason that he brought you here. Some of you, God has gifted you with the ability of being arts and crafty. And so when we paint, when we do different things, that's right down your alley. Some of you are handy. You're handy men or handy women. You're able to fix things. Guess what? We have a really old building that constantly needs fixing. So that may be why God brings you here. You may be gifted in, in playing an instrument. And this was Jake's last Sunday playing with us. Not that he's leaving. He's not going anywhere. Unless he lied to me. That he'll be here on Wednesday nights. But he's got a new job. And his job is taking him out on Sundays right now. But I'm praying that that will change quicker than it's supposed to change. But so now we've got a spot open for that. And I believe God is going to bring somebody in to, to help fill that. But all of these are extensions of the tree. But we need to be recognized by all of these God-like characteristics. Just the same as I want to be recognized as the son. See, it's a privilege of mine when somebody says, Are you Danny DeWitt's son? Are you Quetta DeWitt's son? I say, yes, I am. Why? You look just like them. 
that's a privilege to me because I have a great deal of respect and honor for my mom and dad. I want the same to be said about our church. I want people to look and say, are, are you one of the people that goes to Streeter First Assembly? Yeah, I am. Why? Because you act just like all of them. They're really nice. They're really kind. They're really helpful. See, to me, that would be an honor for that to be said. I want to change the mindset of the community from being, oh, I thought you were closed, to, oh, you've got to be one of those people over at the Street of First Assembly. And I believe God is going to open that door. And the Lord does not look at the thing man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. He looks at the characteristics. Stand with me this morning. Is this what our family tree looks like? I don't think it does yet, but I think God is in the process of pruning. Because I think there's been some branches that haven't been healthy for the tree that God has been pruning. This has been a long, uh, a long hard two years for, for Pastor Amy and myself. There's been some horrible things said about us. There's been some horrible things done to us because we took the role as pastor here knowing and realizing that there was going to be pruning, knowing that there was going to be people that would come and people that would go. But our desire from day one, and it still is the same, is that we just want to be part of a healthy church doing the will of God in this community because this community needs a healthy church. Amen. It needs a healthy group of people that are welcoming in those that are lost and broken. See, because the truth is, if we get to the place where God prunes all the branches that are trying to kill the tree, and we get this tree, you tell me what person can't come in to a church that has all that. The worst of the worst can they come into this kind of church. And I think that's what God is looking for. I think that's what God was speaking to the churches in Revelation about. You've lost your first love and so many of these things aren't represented. And so we need to get back to our first love and that's why I believe God has ordained for this revival to take place September 8th and 9th. So I believe it's just another part of the process of drawing us back to his first love.